Yep, that's me stealing a chest of legends from a photo of the damned, and you're probably wondering how I got here. Well, as so many great tales do, our story begin with a rowboat. So one of the things I like to do when I'm bored in Sea of Thieves is just picking up a rowboat and seeing what kinds of shenanigans I can get into. Obviously, I'm not exactly known for my PvP prowess or my ability to stealth, so if I wanted to make some money, I needed to do it my way. Said way being, without my ship. Now, living on a rowboat definitely comes with a few challenges. For example, you can't be traveling into a storm because the row is gonna take damage and sink. So I figured I might as well use the opportunity and fish for some valuable stormfish. Okay, maybe fishing was not gonna be on our agenda for the day. But alas, I was determined to live this survival lifestyle, even creating a campfire to prepare some food for my challenges ahead. I also found a stool, so things were looking up for me. But things got very interesting once I found a skeleton captain at my next destination. Said captain dropped a map leading me to valuable treasure, but what I found would end up changing the course of my session. Gaha? Maybe we get a road to the FOTD. Chat, who wants to roll through the FOTD of the damned? The voices in my head unanimously agreed that I should be taking this opportunity and make my way to the Ford of the Damned. I didn't know what I was gonna do once I had delivered the skull, but hey, who am I to spit the hand of fate in the face? I stopped by a sea forge to gather some additional supplies before making my way east to the FOTD. But much to my surprise, I was not the only one trying to activate the event. Well, that's awkward. Somebody got ahead of me and had already activated it before I even got close. Now, your average twitch.tv livestream enthusiast would see that as the perfect opportunity to row to the island and hide away until these people finish the fort to then proceed to steal it. But as you might know, things like that don't exactly fall into my wheelhouse, so I decided to take a different approach. Hello! Is anyone here? I'm on a rowboat! Since I didn't want to rely on either stealth nor brute force, I decided to go with deception. I convinced that fella to come over to my rowboat and take the ritual skull off my hands, establishing myself as a certified good guy. I had every intention to play the long game, pretending that I was not interested in the fort, but I could definitely help them if they so desired. But this guy was definitely a smart fella, it would take more than a simple lie to convince him. But thankfully for me, talking is what I do best. Where's your ship now? Funny story, uh, so I ran into a rock, and I sank. <laughs> you ran into a rock? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, okay? But that's how it happened. I'm gonna leave my rowboat here and come back with a ship. Okay. And as such, I began putting my pieces into play. Not only had I established myself as a trustworthy individual, but at the same time, I convinced this guy that I was absolutely incompetent. The perfect cover-up. Now, I had no reason to keep my ship afloat. In fact, I set the butt end of it on fire to create some holes so that it would slowly fill with water and sink again. It was all part of my master plan, one that is hard to comprehend without the college dropout level genius that I possess. But it's all gonna make sense later. For now, I arrived at the FOTD unscathed with another ship conspicuously sneaking about a little ways away, just what I needed. After joining the Alliance, I noticed that these guys were already at the final boss, but I was about to learn just how perceptive this individual actually was, because as soon as I arrived, he tagged out to put all the colored flames of the damned on my ship as a backup, and that inadvertently led to him foiling my plans. <laughs> really? Oh my god. I must have hit a rock again. As much as I further reinforced my incompetence to him, this was a massive blow to what I had in mind. You see, whenever you spend some time on an island without your ship around, you are going to get a mermaid to spawn that can bring you back to your vessel. I wanted to use this mechanic to allow another player to hide on the fort without raising suspicion, because I could always claim it was my mermaid instead of leading them to believe that somebody was tucking on the fort. I was still banking on that suspicious sloop to come over and try exactly that, hoping to team up with them, though since we had just defeated the Boss, I needed to find a way to buy some time. But I was in luck, because apparently this dude's friend had already sailed off to a skull fort to clear that as well, whilst the two of us went for another round at the FOTD, using the skull that I found earlier. We agreed on detonating all the boom barrels in the fort, shy of one stronghold gunpowder keg, which we wanted to keep around in case another ship tried to attack us. And this is where I had a golden opportunity. Just talk about this one, is if, in case these guys uh, roll up on us. Okay. Uh, can you rest? <laughs> Sorry, I got you. Uh, 
I'm like a moron who just went into it. <laughs> listen, I, listen I've, done, I've done things more stupid than that. Now, some of you might be wondering why I didn't just take this chance to run with a loot. The only player in my way was dead, and since his ship was miles away, I'd have all the time in the world to get away with the riches. I think the reason is rather obvious. I was thinking bigger than that. Why would I want to steal just one FOTD worth of loot if I could have two? We put all the loot to the side in preparation for the next round, making sure it is kept safe until another completion was, well, completed. And for now, it was skeleton slaughtering business as per usual. But not for long. Apparently, this dude's friend was getting run up on at the skeleton fort, so I was left alone as they went to PvP. I did take this opportunity to search around all the usual tucking spots just to really make sure there wasn't anybody here with whom I could conspire. Eventually, I realized, wait, what am I doing here? I don't actually want to do all this PvE. I wanted the other guys to do it for me. I decided to sail on over to them, though I would lie if I said that I had come up with a good reason for why I left my post. But it was in that moment that Rare bestowed upon me an alibi. <laughs> There's a Reaper one going there now. Oh, that's a good story. Wait, that's a good story. I can tell them the Reaper got me off the fort and I need to help. Oh my god. The acting classes will finally have been worth it. So I went and did exactly that. I tried to sell them on a sob story of how I found a Tucker that scared me away and was probably the person on the Reaper 1 vessel currently headed for the FOTD. And well, let's just say that the acting classes truly were coming in clutch. Yeah, I'm not very good at PvP, unfortunately. And when I found him, I was like, yeah, I'm leaving. Yeah, we're gonna deal with it in a sec. Thank you. It was almost scary how much things were going my way. As soon as they sold their treasure, they escorted me back to the FOTD whilst targeting the Reaper 1 vessel. I, in the meantime, went back to the actual fort to try and find the owner of that ship with a fairly buggy mermaid giving away their presence. But my introduction to him was of more explosive nature. Oh god. I might be dead here. I think he offed himself with that. Yo, yo, dude, wait. I'm part of the alliance that's doing the FOTD. Just, just come back. I can work with you. I can work with you, all right? Just come back. As much as I would have loved to have a more detailed conversation to discuss my imminent betrayal, my ship was sinking. This is why you should never sacrifice yourself for a keg play unless you know there is someone who can capitalize on that. Because the stronghold gunpowder barrel alone was not enough to sink my vessel before I came back from the ferry. It was rather ironic that the mega keg that was used against me was the exact same one that my alliance decided to hold on to in case of an attack. I gave him a detailed report on whom I saw and what happened so as to not raise any suspicion. Our suspicious friend in the meantime had returned, giving me an albeit short moment to flesh out our agenda. This is the first time that I actually made use of the whispering mechanic that was added to the game a little while ago, by which you can turn around your megaphone to make sure only people in your immediate vicinity can hear you. Once everything was said and done, we put on a grade A show pretending to fight, which obviously I had to lose to keep up my image of complete and utter incompetence. After missing a few cannon shots and the immediate defeat of the one with whom I have conspired, I I also handed over some cursed cannonballs to my alliance to make sure I can stay in their good graces. Now that all of my pieces were in place, all I had to do was wait for the right opportunity to strike. I followed every command I was given, including sacrificing myself to blow up the boss. And not too long after, we had defeated the ghost of Grey Marrow. The timing was perfect. As soon as the key was in my hand, the other sloop made way towards the fort. And of course, my alliance wanted to use the kegs inside the vault against them. I was left completely alone with not one, but two FOT these worth of treasure while the two of them were fighting. I did go out of my way to bury the Reaper's bounties just to make sure we don't get any more players to join the fray once they see that the fort has been cleared. And it was then that I finally found the perfect opportunity. What was that? Okay, chat, this is our chance. With my alliance having to fight for survival on their own vessel, there was no better time than now to start preparing for my getaway. Since I didn't know the exact value of every item in the vault, I prioritized the loot that I knew was very sought after, which obviously includes both of the Athena chests, aka the Chest of Legends. Unfortunately, the fight did not take as long as I had hoped. My gamble was not paying off, but it could still be worth it if I can get away with the few items I secured. All I needed was plausible deniability. Okay, how do I explain? that I'm trying to take all the most valuable loot from the vault. What do I say? What do I say? What do I say? Are you guys all right? We can't run. That's too sus. Unbelievably, I did not need an excuse at all because the captain of that vessel was currently not present and his second in command did not use a microphone. I was not questioned at all as to what the heck I was doing. So of course, I started leaving as though that was the most normal thing on the planet. And on my way to an outpost, I came across my new friends without whom none of this would have been possible. Amazingly enough, these mischief makers let me sell all of the loot being content with getting the 50% alliance payout. So I went and did exactly that, relishing not only in the riches that 
came as a result of my first heist in 2023, but one that was achieved purely on the basis of wits rather than skills. If you're craving for more adventures to watch, make sure to check out my episode titled The Only Boat You Need in Sea of Thieves. Unsurprisingly, that one also started with a rowboat, the character which you can find on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys have a day filled with the riches on the sea. And until next time, peace.